Welcome to Back to the Topic, a podcast with Gabriel Andreu, Karen Turner, Constantine Elijah. I'm just going to read Fred's statement. Uh, the exhibition that is opening on Thursday is Gross Profit by Frederick Vermin, uh, someone I studied with. Um, the impact of homogenized global industry, increasing wealth gaps, corporal owned freedom oppressions as a norm and the misrepresentation of fact in media seem all too familiar to us in this parallel world created by the artist. Small moments of joy can be found as well as major acts of rebellion, showing appreciation of protest and riot as a legitimate means for change. The work also demonstrates the immediate mundanity that can appear in these extreme scenarios. You still have to go to the shops, even if you are an international renowned political activist. Visitors will be confronted with advertising and ephemera placed in and around cave and a series of models in the gallery that represent frozen moments in time. The show contains interactive elements to expand the narrative, so it is important to bring along headphones and a fully charged mobile device to get the full experience that this world has to offer. There is a film that normally plays, which I think shows adverts, which if you follow Fred uh, on his Instagram, at Fredericks Vermin, be able to see all the adverts, and obviously the adverts are going to be playing here. We're sort of surrounded by... Hungarian Rhapsody. Uh, this, this, Hungarian Rhapsody, yeah. yeah what, why are you I don't know. This? I think Fred has... I don't know whether that's part of the show. It, it, is it a monitor? Fred has We're probably going to show um, something. Sort of pimped up his Mac, his Apple Mac screen that he's playing the adverts on. Whether or not that has anything, you will have to ask Fred about that. Sort of more of an insight into what's going on. These tiny... These models are sort of little scaled down models. I know that he's hand painted all the people. He's reflecting sort of things happening within worlds and what's been going on with gentrification and, you know, the change in sort of corporate world. It's, it speaks a lot about the water company has bought up lots of different places and it all feeds into farming and ag agriculture. To me, it's quite comedic. There's a lot of humour runs through this show, although it's talking about a topic that is really quite important and very, what's the, what am I trying to say, of the now. It's talking about life that's happening now and what has been happening, especially sort of during lockdown and our reliance on deliveries and food places and what's been happening in the world. But also it's got a great sense of humour through it. The adverts are hilarious. All of the stuff comes from recognised consumer products that we will all know. So yeah, so what do we all think? I've, I've given my insight. What do you think? So what he said to you, that it's a critique about consumers? It is definitely a critique. Capitalism. Capitalism, you know, gentrification. All of the things also, you know, Fred's a London boy, you know, he's, he's born and bred Lewisham, so he's seeing things within his own high street, within his own area, his own London and, and changes. Is he speaking about present or about the future? It I feels see the dystopian. Underneath the... This uh, comes from somewhere in bridge, Germany, yeah. I asked him uh, about this, and there's a place in Germany that has these trains and the colours, the orange and blue, Southwestern railways. Right. They, they, no. they have, well, they, he said. He said that blue and red, but yeah. He said that this is a real thing. This above railway that happened somewhere in Germany. I'm not sure. I've forgotten. Well, he, where he has said. been exhibiting in he's Germany. He's exhibited in. Yeah, I, I know. He's like he has been there several times, mm. so it's possible that. Yeah, he looks quite German. Yeah. Yeah, that, and it is a real train thing. Line. And and the ten foot the flyover, flyover and bridge is real it's so and he uses it a lot in the advert so all of these places you've got the very trendy hipster place you know i was driving today down battersea park road and so many shops have shut down a lot of the old the old shops that have been there for years and you can see them they're all a bit dusty and then bang in the middle is this sort of trendy bar 
that is just still <laughs> surviving and it's still there and it has its garden. And it sort of reminded me, this was today when we went shopping for the, is the it, event. You call it hipster because it's pink. Mm. <laughs> No, I think it's more the name, the place, the place. It's Agree like, as well, yeah. It's the place to be. Yeah. I, I see it here as a humor, like the place, because almost every place has a name. So it has a title. Yeah, title. So name, the yeah. place. That's I see it clever. in a humor it way. It reminds me quite a lot of special place, the place. The place. <laughs> Well, well, it's really that, that, this one. Eh? We, are yeah, just, yeah. we are just looking at one the of one the one sculpture. One of the sculptures. The Do you call it a sculpture? Do you call it installation? Ooh, ah, interesting. Interesting. Because to me, it's a a model. A model is a sculpture. A, it is, as an architecture is model. Yeah. I see them as sculpture. Don't touch. Don't touch the sculpture. Because you it's are the one that, that touch you can't it. touch no, the sculpture. No, you're just touching in case that you can move or no. Yes, I can break something. The little people, but no, you cannot move you it. You cannot so move it. So there is, yeah, it becomes, for me, yeah, it can be an installation, it can be a sculpture. It's up to mm. you, I mean. It all lights up. We haven't got it lit up now. You yeah, know, no, I mean that it's so difficult sometimes to define what is art. It can be a sculpture, it can be an installation. Well, supposedly, if you put it in a gallery, it's art. First of all, yes. Yeah. No, I am not doubting that it's art for sure. I, I am just Anything. saying what can be. It can be an installation, can be a sculpture, and it's like just you define. Anything you, you consider as art, it is. So. No, no, this is for sure art. It reminds me because we're all from the same art school. I was studying there, we had architects studying together. So I saw a lot of. Um, it reminds me very models, much, yeah. yeah. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a sculpture, but it actually is. The street planning, when they built that little copies of the, the real... Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Like a little miniature. It so it a, looks pretty much like that. Mm. Yeah, it is Which like I suppose that, goes yeah. back to you saying it's an installation. It's been installed within here, but it is... But I see it as a Every, sculpture. I mean, I think that now seeing all... It's an gallery around. Everything together and then each of the pieces mm. is more a sculptural pieces you, you know, because this is a sculpture too the ones that we have on the walls then the we have then we right. have posters yeah the signs mm. these two signs are a sculpture then we have the posters but then we have these kind of three models that are more architectural yeah. models but they are more are a sculpture when you look at them, all the lights light up and inside all the little houses, something that an architect wouldn't do, <laughs> is put people making that, art. No, they do. They do, do they go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my niece is an like, architect. So to make they it do, more they have to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, they have to do it. Oh, now. that's like, interesting. Because you know, I, I imagined an architect would build a model to show the building, they need not to reflect what happens in the building. They because need... who knows what's going to happen? They need in to the show building. how it would interact in, in real life. Mm -hmm. So exactly. they need to build the See, realistic environment. To me, that environment. seems like a complete waste of time. No, they, need, they need to show it. It's like Greg is showing. Fred, Fredericks Vermin, Fredericksvermin.com. Here, you know, the life. For example, we are like just focusing in this one. That it reminds us. Well, it's a London street. Is European countries? No. It looks very much British or London for me. Well, for me, it to looks like Peckham, but we were thinking that is more like. Well, the fact that he's used in Berlin reference. because except the, the train because, underneath the, the yeah. bridge, it looks very much London for mm. me. The, the houses look very much London. Or maybe they are quite terraced little houses, uh, the, the chimneys. Yeah, I don't remember seeing. And especially underneath the bridge, the house yeah. <laughs> looks very much London way. Yeah, it's a satirical critique. It's a satirical, satirical critique. Yes, it's definitely. Like it's like, well, definitely. it's how Fred works in a way. Of he, his work is really satirical. Yeah. You know, it's like Always has, has this kind of humor, but at the end, he's an activist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So are we disappointed that there's no penises in this world? I mean, for me, this uh, urban environment were more uh, closer to my interests. Of... Than penises. No, I'm really happy that Fred working. has come back 
to a sculpture. Uh, definitely, because you know. he built things, didn't he? Well, when during, he during, during our I study with Fred, Ooh, we were yeah. in the same you year. Do. And always I like a lot his uh, sculpture. And uh, then when we finish university, of course, it's, you know, have different lives uh, to do a sculpture. It's difficult, it's money, it's space. space. And then it's like doing a massive sculpture and if you don't show it, where do you put it? In your <laughs> studio. But when, when your studio is full of sculptures, what do you do? You destroy it. Because yeah. you need more space oh. to work. Or in my case, put it into storage. <laughs> If you have a storage have in storage, London, yeah. you need to be happy and mm. well to be rich. Exactly. Ah, well, well, well to be, you know. So I always uh, remember that uh, exhibition that we did in my land. That he did that massive sculpture. I love it. And then it's like then he started to do pennies, a lot yeah, of yeah, pennies, lots of penises, penises that they were nice and I love it but I miss that sculpture yeah. so coming back here you know and seeing this solo so Fred that, and seeing this sculpture again is like oh yeah you have come he back to yeah. something that I really think that he is really talented yeah. you know definitely in there definitely this is a project and a half you know this is just as far as Fred's concerned this is just the beginning and this is a space that he's using to experiment. This is an ongoing project. Videos are so clever, you know, mm. check out, check, check out his Instagram account and his website. He's got this. At fredericks.verman or fredericksverman.com. He's done this series of videos. He's talking about a newspaper to go with this world that he has created. He's got the sculpture model. Idol. Behind you is idol, like idol. it's like idol. Idol. So he's ah, so taking kind of, so an pre- idol is yeah, being I, I, you know, laziness. To be idle is to be lazy. And uh, but it's a take on Lidl. Yeah. And it's the supermarket. The Lidl supermarket. Genius. Yeah. Do you know, it's so clever. And you see the queue here. The, pe- the little people of the yeah, queue. Yeah, yeah. It's like two meters apart. Of course they so are. It's like, this is all... But they don't have a mask. Fred is planning an interaction, so if you are going to come along to the show, bring a full charged phone and some headphones, because there's going to be, as you look into the sculptures, the installations, you can tap on a QR code that will take you to more information. The whole show is going to be quite interactive closely there's so much to see do you know where did he find these kind of small figures i gave him some these are they're for architects they're little white figures and they come all white so so he hand painted all of them there's a lot of work gone into <laughs> onto, into it it looks like but yeah, they you can are, see that. i had a whole bag of them that i was given and i didn't really know what they were but they're for looking at perspective and putting them in buildings and things for architecture students <laughs> there are people inside there is there's houses. an artist in the <laughs> house <a> naughty ones. <laughs> there's some naughty ones yeah but these all light up which is going to be beautiful Whoa. but i said to fred i said are you here as in fred i said have you said and he said, I have got the artist house, but the artist is somewhere in here. And he said he didn't purposely do it to represent himself, but there is an artist living in one of the houses. But and even all the things... It looks like, very realistic, I would say. But like, Even like here on the little chimney, it says, don't smoke. <laughs> do you get what I mean? You've got to just look so deep. And he said something, and I can't remember, but this... Yeah. The pink house. <laughs> on the pink, on the place, this, what does this say? Karoshi. Karoshi, yeah. Sushi bar. And the sushi bar, but it, what did he say now? But it means, he said, this is where all the corporates go. Yes, true. It's like all the pubs now, they are becoming a bit the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to the bar on Friday, the pub, for first time in, well, I don't know. In a year. I don't know, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> And now you have to download an app just to order. Yeah, you do. You do have and to then down, I download, download an app to order a beer. And I download an, the app 
to order. I ordered the first drinks. Mm. It was fine. And then the second time, my bank started to ask me, pues, I don't know what, and I couldn't order. It's like, that's too complicated. I it just is want, very I, complicated. I just, you just I want, just want a mind drink. Mind you, it is quite nice, you know, not having to queue at a bar thick with five people and waiting to move forward to get served. If the technology works, then it works really well and you get your bar, you get your drink delivered and it's sort of a bit civilised. So there's, I sort of half like it, half don't. I've stood at bars before and been ignored. Oh, you, you know yeah, what I mean? It's a very common thing for me. Yeah. I've stood at bars before, and especially if, if I go Everyone being served me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but you went to the bar, you, you know, and then you meet people in the bar, and it's that's like true, you, that's start to, true. you start to talk with the people, like you're just waiting for their drink. Probably and you're supposed to stand away from yeah, but other you're, you're households. Still, <laughs> yeah, but you still oh, no, talk, we're talking about you, before COVID. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, before oh, COVID. Before like, COVID, be, Exactly, yeah, before COVID. <laughs> like, you know, when you go to the bar, and then you're waiting for the <laughs> Thing. And, and you get up close to someone. Yeah, close to someone, <laughs> and then you start to talk. What are you talking about? And it's like, come on, Constantine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flirting a bit, or just talking with people. Yeah. That now it's like, no, you're, in, you're in your, you're in your table, and you just wait for your drinking table, table, table and you don't socialize. And it's like, exactly. God, is. I, I was thinking, that, you know, it's like, if I have to go out and this is this all yeah, this yeah, technology... Yeah. Well, it's hard work. I go into a third world country. I prefer, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. give me these things. Else. Like, this is becoming too civilized. It is. <laughs> it's not about I that, think actually. also, I, mean, I don't like the... The third world countries will use these COVID rules even more than here, of course. I think. No, because they use cars because they need... You know, the third world countries, they are it's not It's a real tool for, to, to regulate uh, people to, to limit their freedom. What do you mean? For example, now, okay, of course I'm talking about Russia because I know everything about that. Uh, COVID rules, if you go to Russia, especially to Moscow, you wouldn't realize that there is something happening. Like pand- you wouldn't really. Yeah, pandemic for them, finished. But today, because some protests going around, suddenly, like... Because of COVID, you are not allowed to, to go to protest because it's too... But it's the protest because I was listening yesterday in the radio, I think at BBC4, about Putin and about how, you know, has become this uh, dictatorship. Yeah, but how he is using... Russia is not the only country, I believe, in, in, who is using the COVID to limit the freedom. Of course, no, no, no. Of course well, no. that's for and sure. And just to say, I don't believe that that is happening here in Britain. No, no. Like no, some no. people say. No, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But how, uh, it's totally different the freedom that they give you here or no. It's related with the culture too. For example, and it's related with capitalism too. That is related with threats yeah. here. Yeah. For example, you don't have any theatre open here since COVID happened. We cannot go to the theatre here. In Spain, the theatres are open. Well, they did open. Me and Jody went to Sadler's Wells last... They October, slowly started to open, I think. October, November. November, November, when they opened but for a bit. But it was socially distanced. Early, it was very strict and it was amazing. We had a great time. And they yeah. opened on GS for a bit and Sadler's Wells. Yeah, West. just a little, very but, little. I mean, in general, they are not open. In Spain, they are open. Why that? Because here they think that they need 80% of the people to go inside to get so some money. it's worth it. It's only to be worth it. In Spain, it's more in a way, yeah, it's worth it for the... Can we pay the actors? Can we pay the director, the production, la la? So then if we can fit that, we do it. Yeah. But here, no. Here is more money. Has to be yeah, 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 money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has to be, uh, you know... Is it worth our while? Exactly. Yeah, but it's, it's about the money that is, is, is the income of the production. So actor, look, actors, we are vocational. So, you know, we Who do... Who says that? Well, they say that. Yeah, I was going to say, does an actor think that, that, you know, to me, a vocation... Vocational. Vocational. Yeah. They do it, yeah. they say... They do it because 
you know, well, they do do it because they love it, but they still have to earn a fucking income. It's a bit like being a and nurse a work or, or a teacher like is vocational, but they still have to earn yeah, yeah. The, an income. Back to the topic, sponsored by Cave. Back to the topic, sponsored by Cave. Back to the topic, it's sponsored by Cave. www.cavepimlico.co.uk So people presume that as artists and actors and all the rest of it, we'll do it for nothing because... Mm. It's like you, have, you, you do it for CV sometimes, yeah. you do it for a lot of things, but the thing is, like, you need to, to work in a way. So... Mind you, one thing I have noticed is... <laughs> Um, you know, programmes that are going out on the telly and things like that, they're getting a much better rate of celebrity because everyone is stuck. So you're getting, you're getting more A-lister celebrities doing things now on telly and lives and things that they wouldn't bother doing. They wouldn't have touched it before. Do you get what I mean? They absolutely wouldn't have touched it before, but now they're just desperate to get out and do something. It is really hard. They need attention, the celebrities. That's a good point. Need attention, another yeah, point see, is Well, like we were talking about ego earlier, weren't we? Ego, ego, too. But another thing is too that, you know, it's, it's, it's like we are like in a moment that it makes you think too what is worthy and what is not and it's not all about mm. money you know sometimes mm. uh, artists also need attention probably oh. or maybe not <laughs> like why we are making art artworks why we are making up our wars yeah ah that's a good question so who has the answer? Why are we making artworks? Why am uh, I know why? Is it individual? You know, you why? know why? Do yeah. you, I know why. But it's Do you know you... why? Everyone has a different purpose. Mm. I think. So but, you uh, reason. Uh, but um, why you are making? Yeah, I do need to your attention from people. Yeah. To be noticed. To be. I, I just need to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have, and that's how you I don't feel. have TikTok. I'm very much in TikTok too. See, for me... You are not I'm completely in, in TikTok. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm not completely in TikTok. Uh, you know some very now. trendy stuff of TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> All I watch is cats. I like cats and dancing videos. I love... The same, yeah. Dancing. <laughs> There's lots of beautiful, beautiful young But I'm following cats. particular people, particular yeah. cats, depending particular on... cats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love so, that one too, sir. But for me, back to the topic. Back to yeah. the topic. Back to topic. And the topic was the question, why do we make art? Do we yeah. need attention? For me, no, but it's I, certainly not about attention. So for you, one moment. Okay. It's about attention. It's definitely about attention, but also it's because it must be interesting to myself to, to do stuff. To, uh, about the moment when I'm involved in doing something or to experience seeing life that's probably because so, I'm more about uh, spontaneous and about present uh, person rather than planning so for me it is interesting to make it something or whatever I make but it has to be appreciated afterwards yeah. <laughs> so See, it's both me, it's... yeah but this is the second part I understand you the, the second part is a appreciation or recognition that we say. Yeah, recognition. 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 Got okay, yeah. Word. Say it again. Recognition. 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 Yeah. I understand the second part and we will go there when it's my turn. <laughs> but what is the first that it makes you to do art? Um, to make pfft. art? I cannot say right now, for example. Uh, when I started to study, I was applying for photography because I had a um, like professional degree. Experience? And no, I had a degree, but it's like college degree of photography. He's from Latvia and yeah. they all like do photography uh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. he told me. So, so, so I, I was applying for my university, like I had a degree like between 
school, like college, probably, okay. and before the university. So I, I was in yeah. photography, so in there, and I was applying for photography, fine art. And when I was applying for that, like, fine art thing, I just ignored it because I didn't understand completely what was fine art. Like, it suggests, like, photography degree, I'm fine with this, I went to the interview, I was accepted. So I, <laughs> I started to study, and only after that I realized, like, fine art, actually it's about, like, art, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Com yeah. contemporary art, like, yeah. where mostly you for us. You have translation in... Um, for me, was yeah, it's it's bellas, no, it's, bellas artes, so it's it's totally, totally yeah, we have a degree. Firstly, the like, definition of fine art in Latvia or in Russian, it would be different than we were studied. How do you say in Latvia? It's a good question. Um, <laughs> Come on, Constantine. I uh, I'm trying. You just want us here and speak Latvian. I don't love you? it. My native language, my first language, is Russian. He doesn't care, Russian, Russian. Latvian. Just speak to him in your in language. Another, exactly, um, speak to me in your language. So say fine art. In Russian is Vusoko <laughs> Iskustva. Sounds nice. Sounds nice, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I would translate it back to English like high art. Like, high art, okay. Yeah. It, that means high level of art, I would really? say that. I, yeah. For fine art and bellas artes is kind of the same. Bellas? Bellas. Bellas artes. See, for me, who naively went to art school thinking there was... The best artist now <laughs> went to naively without knowledge. Yeah. Naively went to art school thinking they were going to teach me to paint and I'd done a foundation at Camberwell. And the first time... I done a foundation at Camberwell, thinking they were going to teach me to paint. That's it, but they I didn't want to use the foundation. Paint, whatever, yeah, <laughs> I did. I had to. I'd left. They only stop no... you to do what you, you you know how to do. Yeah. Forget about your skills. <laughs> do whatever else. <laughs> no skills. <laughs> to me, fine art was like Rembrandt. Mm -hmm. I I saw fine art as I saw, you know, the galleries down like more academic fine art and these view of it sort of historical art, art throughout history. I didn't think of fine art as contemporary, conceptual, or any of the things that I learned. So when I sort of knew I was studying fine art, it was a bit confusing to me. I found the word fine, I, I believed, and, uh, you know... Yeah, it, it sounds it like probably excellent. Sounds, yeah. It sounds quite humorous, but I believed that was... You know, Tishan, this art is fine. Tishan and Rembrandt and these artists throughout history that created this fine art that hung in the National Gallery. You know, so the word, just the word itself, fine art, or the word fine with art, I was confused for a long time. Our art time. is not fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I found that whole description of what are you studying? I'm studying fine art. You know, I come from a very working class background. I came out of education quite young. I've learned through my work, you know, I've heard everything that I, that I do, I've learned through doing it. We spoke about linguistics and language last week. You know, there's certain words that confuse my thinking. They think, you know, and it's, and that was one of the things that I especially remember when I started studying and fine art, fine art, fine, and I was just like, oh, I don't want to study fine art. I'm not interested in fine art, you know, which in my mind was the sort of stuff that I'd grown up with going into the old galleries at the Tate, um, the know. National and things like that. So I considered fine art as being old art, historical art, and never considered it as contemporary or conceptual art. I was confused for quite a while within what I was studying. I thought they were going to teach me to paint, and they didn't. But going back to the, I was back more, to the topic... I was, I was more confused inside of the university oh God, than before so I go in. But back, like, you know, what I choose. 
It wasn't, it what, wasn't what you expected. Yeah. Well, going was, back to the topic... I was confused to explain to my relatives what I was what studying. What was doing. To exactly. translate it into Russian. Really? Well, or explain in Latin because... I don't have any problem with that because for, uh, you know, we have the same kind of degree and it's like the same kind of fine art. It's bellas artes that is fine art. So the translation is perfectly for me. For me, it was more what I choose to study and what they teach me. What they teach you, yeah. So no, because I cool. went to London Met to study one title that was amazing. That was Time Beast Media Performance. <gasps> That's right, performance uh, art. Performance, Time Beast Media, video art, and was kind of like, wow, this is what I had been looking. I started fine art because I am an actor, yeah. but I gave up acting during seven years you know when i moved to england uh, as you know well i didn't speak in english i needed to create i am a creative person so then 2008 i was in berlin uh, 2006 was in the moment when i moved yeah i was in berlin 2006 the first year i moved and then i saw a bill viola piece in a museum and i start to cry in the museum like I couldn't hold. I just cry and cry and cry. And what work was this? Is I never remember the name, but it's one uh, screen, vertical screen, and people is like approaching to the camera, and then you, they are saying goodbye to a person that has died. So it's the coffin there. You imagine the coffin. You just see the, per the people approaching the person that is just lying and die, and they are saying goodbye to this person. It's so far emotional. So when I saw that piece, I said, oh, I want to be a video artist. Okay. That was the moment that I decided to be a video artist. And then in 2000, this was 2007, 2009, I met my friends Iris, Carlo, and Margarita, and we become a collective and we did a video. And then uh, I did my first video before the university. So I didn't do a foundation because when I went there to present my project, they, they knew that I wanted to yeah, do video yeah. art. But then, you know, I enroll in those video, la 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 la, performance, and they didn't teach me anything. So for this, I changed to photography because it's like, why are you gonna be here? You didn't yeah, teach me yeah, anything. Because yeah. in photography was Mick Williamson, and he was really good in yeah. teaching you He's technique. Such a good. Exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah. Big up Mick. He was yeah, uh, Mick. all his students. We miss you. Yeah, I don't. He he's retired now. I don't know a student that was studying. I didn't study photography. I did. But I did First have, year. I did have moments of... Lisa. Lisa of, of was the technician. That yeah. was like, Lisa was a moment. Yeah. Yeah. We had some great tutors. There were some yeah. good tutors. But for me, Joe Longors, that was sure. in my last She's year, right. she was the one, you know. But the thing is, like, I went to the university because I needed to create now, after many years of being in this, yeah, I won't. I am looking for recognition because if not, what is the point of doing art so many years? Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. yeah. So before you weren't looking for recognition. No, I just was looking to. You create. were thinking to how to it's earn the, that recognition. No, it's because I wasn't. I wasn't doing acting. And I was working as a professional actor in Spain during six years before I moved to here. And then I fell in love. But in some way, here. you see, it's yeah. far, definitely not the same actor and artist, it's different things. But in, in some ways, say, it works in the same direction, like, again, seeking for attention or mm. in a good way asking for that. <laughs> Depends. Well, it's like, deserved I, as well, I think. I think, you know, we were talking about earlier when we work really hard. You attract uh, attention of other people. No, I understand you what you mean, but uh, as an actor now, I know that I am a puppet for the director. Mm. And in these directions that uh -huh. he gave me, the director, I gonna enjoy and create my art but always will be a collaborative mm -hmm. project. 
it is the director, it's the producer, it's the script writer. So it's, it's, it's something made by mm -hmm. a lot of people, okay? And I am one of the pieces mm -hmm. that, as an artist, so your fine art practice. My fine is just art part you. practice. No, it's not all about me. It's what I want to explain to yeah, you. Yeah. As an actor, I'm gonna do my last was a priest and was a fascist priest. You know, <laughs> my mom is not happy about, but I enjoy a lot <laughs> doing yeah, yeah. that. It's not me, not at all. Mm. You know, it's what I'm gonna choose to do in my art, not at all. Mm. But I really enjoy to do that for the director, for the script writer, yeah, yeah, yeah. for that everything. So, you know, it's a collaborative project. In my art, could be a collaborative project, and I like collaborative projects, but it's what I really need to put out, what I really need to express out. So it's about me creating something that I need to vomit, mm -hmm. I need to express, mm -hmm. because if I don't express, it's in my brain going around and around and around. To me, making art is intuitive. It's something that I've always done. We spoke last week about the fact that I considered myself an artist before I went to art school. It was, uh, you know, I, I considered that. <laughs> but because I've always intuitively been very creative when I feel... Down. I use it, I suppose, as a form of counselling for myself. You know, I love going into my studio and just sticking a paper on the wall and just painting. While doing that, I have no feelings about who's going to see it, about whether anyone's going to like it, about what it even is. You know, I don't... So the process... It's not until that initial process of getting started can be me for an hour just really expressing myself. It's not until I stand back and then have a look at the mess I've made or whatever I've made, but I feel better that then I'll start looking at it as thinking about colour, thinking about form, thinking about perspective, and then thinking about what will anyone else think. You know, my work tends to... I don't to, think yeah. about what they are going to think, but I want to... Feel. Feel. Okay, what well, anyone's going to feel then? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's something... You want to feel looking at your, like, final no. result? No, 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 I want oh. that the people feel. You know, I do art because I want to translate or to, yeah, translate something to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you. I mean, I remember one day doing a talk as an actor for actors that they were beginning starting to okay, act yeah, in yeah, yeah. many years ago yeah. and in that moment I was quite down so it wasn't the best talk of my life but I just remember was you giving the talk yeah I was okay. giving the talk and uh, they were asking me just want to act and I just can can I do it just on in front of my mirror for myself and I was like okay but if you want you can do whatever you want in yeah. your life but which is the point because you are doing acting because you want to, to convey, convey something, something to others, you know, to give course, something to yeah. others. That is the point of yeah. acting for me. And is that the point? That's the point of art as well. Well, yeah. You, as well. you know, yeah. if I want to paint something for myself, fine, do it. Mm. But you do something because you want to give a message to people. Yeah. It's not going to write to anyone in the same way. Of course, no. Because this is the magic of art. Mm. For everyone is going to well, rise especially, in different. I think that fits well into, into this show, you know, because what this has done for me, this gross profit, this show of threads, is really made me think about the London that I live in and the fakery of it and the how London yeah. just feels at the moment, especially after lockdown, that we're just being sold stuff left, right and centre that we don't really need. And sometimes that can be the same within the art world. The art world is massive and there's people churning out art, you know, and churning out art that doesn't really say anything. And I suppose for me, when I make art, 
it's about a process. But if I'm going to think about exhibiting art, that's when I start thinking about how it will speak to an audience. It's, I, it's what about, as I say, I have this week um, a career advice with oh, this career French advice, yeah. um, curator and artist. Career advice. And it's so like, uh, what do you want? Do you want decorative art? Do or you want decorative? Decorative, okay, yeah. Or do you want to say something? Do you want to say something? Yeah, but decorative art can say something. Uh, decorative art, uh, like more commercial art. Because in my head, is yeah, but the art you we... know, what is decorative art? Like, what do you mean, what is decorative I don't, art? You know, I bought a painting last week. It, it actually just visual something which you I would appreciate, but as I understand, but you wouldn't have any uh, thought behind it or exactly, like exactly. It's, it is not any message. But, mm -hmm. but, but doesn't art have its own individual? Just something beautiful. No, no, attractive. no, of no, no. Karen, there are. Look, we are seeing here in Fred's, okay, yeah. because we are in front of Fred's, and you have a lot of. Well, actually, it, yeah. it is really good question. <laughs> like um, the, speaking about the decorative, like black square or black rectangle. Black rectangle. Yeah. yeah. Technically, it's just uh, some shape on a uh, canvas was painting, but actually, yeah. it is a huge meaning uh, hidden there, and actually has a history and. Blah, blah, blah. Well, so I, it actually it, has a meaning. Well, of course, there are a lot of things that they have a meaning now. And if you want, you can have a meaning of this stool, this <laughs> glass of wine, oh. this, you know, everything can have a meaning if you want. And I think that it's a lot of... Well, is, is it if you want or is it if someone's meaning. narrative fits that, that piece? Is that meaning you put right now on something what was As made before? As we all see... Or that meaning you Art <laughs> subjectively, we all see it. So decorative art, there's obvious... Decorative art is quite... No, decorative, it is something decorative like... Decorative is a weird, a weird... I no, would explain it. Is what that, do you consider? No, it's so, a weird word. But what I found So is, what do you consider as decorative art? The thing is, like, what you see in a lot of art first, for example, is like, do you see a lot of art that is easy to sell because it looks nice in your living room? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that behind that art has a concept has a statement, has a research. And you can see in Fred here, oh, cool. you know, has a statement, has a research, you know, and has a concept. All of this is here behind of that. But you wouldn't have it in your living room. Wow, why not? But in general, why in not? General, yeah. In general, you well, wouldn't have it in this your is living depend room. Depends of who. You depends have, on the size exactly, of the living room. Exactly. For this decorative <laughs> art, it's easy to sell. It's possible for the people that they don't know so much about art. But that is bullshit because you can sell things with concept with people mm. that they don't know how much about art either. So, Well, an example would be, you know, last week I bought a painting and I bought the painting, although I knew the concept and the story throughout the, all of the series of paintings, I bought the painting because it had its own, when I looked at it visually, firstly, the one thing that I'm drawn to is a colour palette. I can't help it. Do you get mm. what I mean? It's a colour palette. So I was drawn to the colour, but the content of the painting and uh, collage gave me a narrative of something that is happening in my own life. It so wasn't the personal... same narrative as what the artist painted it with. Yeah. So, but it's decorative. It's beautiful. It looks amazing in my living room. Yeah. So it is decorative, but it's is still Is it decorative comes. for you? It's decorative for me, but I think it was also... But do you have personal attachment to that? I have personal. I've made my own narrative yeah. towards the painting. Mm. Even though I know the artist, I know... The, you know, even down to the fact that this is the thing. she was painting foxes and I see a cat. And now that it is hanging in my living room, it is a cat. It's not a fox. 
<laughs> it's not in my living room. But what they told you last While week. it was in so the what gallery. What they told you last week, Karen, that's a cup. I see a cup. And you say, <laughs> the artist says. The artist says it's a fox. But now it is. No, but new. this is a really nice of conversation. Course. It's what you see, so, what you don't then, see. Uh, to be honest, to me, it's decorative within my home and within, even though I have created a narrative within the work and that's why I bought it. I don't buy a lot, especially big artworks, you know, I can't afford it. So it's the most decorative painting within my flat. But I know that Emma, the artist's story, she didn't consider it as decorative when she painted it. She considered it as part of a narrative of a concept that she had to make an, an exhibition and yeah. an artwork. So when does artworks become decorative? Okay, we continue. Wear your mask, bring your mask, come to cave, meet us all.